So yeah, what did you think about this this episode? Um, I think we have you know some great moments here where Tong Lu Kim says you know I'm not a stereotype, and then he he finds out he can he can build a wall. Um, but you also have the parents you know giving in to um, you know this fear of of threats. They give in to the media. Um, and the role of what the media, you know, tells them that, oh, you know, like it turns out that you know, most children are abducted by their parents, right? And therefore they have to send them out to the, to the Mongolians. Um, you have a little element of illusion in this where uh, Tung Lu Kim says, say hello to my little friend, which is a, a Scarface, you know, uh, illusion. So again, when we think about um, intertextuality, there's a great moment of illusion. Um, you know, where it's kind of an indirect, I mean, it's a pretty famous line, but you know, you may not, you may not have recognized it and you may not recognize it. Um, let's see. I think the rabble rabble is just incredibly important here. And the rabble rabble really comes to signify this, this, you know, element of like when people get so fear induced, right. And they start they come together to talk about it. It's, it becomes just rabble, rabble. They can't really think clearly. They don't say things very clearly. They just argue. They just they just yell. And this happens a lot in South Park, where people get outraged by by something, usually fear induced, and they act based upon that fear. And this in this case, it's the threat, you know, of themselves, but of child abductors who ends up being themselves you know, and this, this fear of that and how are they going to control it? They put helmets on the kids. They make it so their kids only play, um, you know, baseball with, with one another, you know, where they eliminate the, the threat of outsiders, you know, um, which I think is a pretty, like, relevant concept to, to right now, this element of walling off. I mean, think about our president is building a stupid fucking wall, you know, um, you know, along the, Mex the Mexico border, you know, I mean, um, right now, we're in so many ways like walling ourselves off from, from one another, from society, um, you know, so, you know, a lot based on fear, um, not, not to say that the threat is not real, but it's often, you know, it's a fear-based thing. I mean, if you look, you know, two, two, three weeks ago, you know, um, where people were panic buying toilet paper, <laughs> you know, you couldn't get a roll anywhere, you know, all that, all that stuff, you know. It's just, you know, something, something to think about, you know, the role of, of the media. I watch the news like 10 minutes a day, you know, then I'm out, you know. I mean, it's, I, I just need 10 minutes, you know, get a little bit on, on the social media. And that's kind of the extent of, of what I need. If you're sitting there like cuddled up with your, your, your cup of coffee, you know, watching hours and hours of cable news, like you're going to go in, into mayhem. And it's not really news, it's infotainment, you know, stuff like that. So, but what role does that play in perpetuating stereotypes and creating fear? And I think this episode really, really delves into a lot of those elements, how we develop fear. I mean, the child abductors become kind of like, um, you know, a metaphor for all outside all outside threats, you know, so many outside threats to, you know, our narrative or our equilibrium in the world, our balance in the world, you know, and, you know, how are we walling off now a virus, you know, how can we do that by, you know, walling off ourselves to the world, so, um, you know, anyways, you see that element here in this, in this episode of stereotypes, you have a lot of intertextual moments, you have a lot of, um, you know, <clears throat> you know, moments where, um, you know, they deal with, you know, how do you bar outside groups, outside views, outside, you know, outside threats, you know, uh, you build, you build a wall. And this wall is not necessarily, in this case, the Great Wall of South Park is a physical wall, but it's also a mental wall. So anyways, I'll tack on this clip, um, which is um, a little bit about stereotypes um, and yellow face in South Park, um, you know, just to keep you thinking about some of these uh, elements that we talked about today. Anyways, you've completed the second week of class. Congratulations. All right, hope to see you on Mondays at five o'clock during our crappy happy hour. Um, you know, just come hang out, chat, shoot the shit. We can talk about this stuff. Um, you know, share a beverage, share some music, whatever. You know, um, hope to see you. Take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Week three. Peace.
Hey, Mr. Nakayama, you know that China and Japan are actually a different country? Well, really? That's right. And if you look at a map, you see China and Japan separate by body of water. Oh. This place, City Sushi, is new. You know, some Japanese guy opened up City Sushi right next to fucking City Walk. And everyone thinks it's Chinese food and that it's better Chinese food. And that makes him furious. It's super important to these two people that everyone understands right. the fucking difference. So they do an assembly together. Mr. Kim and Mr. Yakimoto present Chinese, Japanese, what's the diff? <laughs> hey, what's the diff? <laughs> Today we're gonna have a, you know, an assembly on diversity of Asian cultures. Right. And now here is Mr. Liu Kim. <laughs> he comes out for <laughs> 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 Give it up, I am Chinese. <laughs> and I am a Japanese. <laughs> Do you feel like the city walk guy is a stereotype? Uh, yes. <laughs> but, but I guess we, we have to go almost all the way, right, in order to kind of make a statement about what, it's, what it is as an absurd stereotype. Okay, kids, today we have a special assembly, okay, to learn about, we're going to learn about the diversity of Asian people. Okay, please welcome Mr. Liu Kim and Mr. Junichi Nakayama. Nihama, South Park Elementary! Konnichiwa! How are we all feeling? Yay, boy! Did you know that China and Japan are actually a different countries? Oh, really? Trey's gonna push it. He's gonna push it over the top. And if you pull back visually or pull back on your assignment, he won't get what he wants. Dude, you work at South Park. You better figure out what's funny about that and be able to execute it. Gail, Asian diversity logo. I try to give it to the people who'd be most offended by it because they understand it better. Wait, Oftentimes it's more the storyboards that are more offensive, I think, because they just, they're like, oh, he's Chinese, so they draw, like, buck teeth and slanted eyes on the characters. I think most people know what they're getting into when they're working here. Everyone's a target in this building. You can't even pronounce OE towel! How do you know you're not just feeding a stereotype? We are. We do. I'd be hypocritical to say, well, we do it, you know, and it's like, there's, especially with that guy, <laughs> there's been, you know, and it's like, but we're never just doing the thing of like, okay, all the laughs just come from him being a stereotype. Yeah, he's a stereotype, but the, sh the story is about this. Townspeople are officially naming this whole Chinatown area Little Tokyo. What the fuck? I think that there's actually possibly some... Asians out there that'll feel a little vindicated, you know, to be like, yeah, there's a difference, you know. <laughs>